Good evening, thank you for joining us. My name is Jemima Beatrice. Let's have a look at today's headlines. Good evening. This evening we will speak to uh, Ms. Rosa Namises, who is the Dana Dana Gwe of the Komanin commun uh, Traditional uh, Authority. She's also a community activist uh, who has largely spoken out against the living conditions of landless people living in the corridors in the uh, co uh, Komas region. Mm -hmm. Thank you for joining us, Ms. Namises. Yeah, welcome. Ms. Nami says, can you please share with us, uh, um, as we start this interview, mm -hmm. the living conditions of the pe landless people living in the corridors and their background? Mm -hmm. I think the living conditions of people living in the corridors, and I want to say these conditions can never be compared w and, and said it is better than those who live in the urban areas or it's better from those who live in the villages. Mm -hmm. That living conditions is very bad, especially now that the rain has come. The people, for example, in Dortapes, um, uh, by coincidence, those are my blood relatives. They still stay out there. Uh, from what we have seen, in the Thomas area up there, people are still in the corridor. In the Harris area, the area we say Harris, people are still in the corridors. Um, if you go to this side of um, the airport side, people are still in the corridors. And why are people in the corridors? These are very people who used to be employees of the farms surrounding the Thomas, the Thomas Rural. They, they used to be employees there. And either age, because they have become redundant for the employer, or uh, they are accused and not even given a fair hearing. And as a result, they live in the corridor. Living in the corridor really results in you becoming very vulnerable very open to possible but, uh, animals that can be dangerous, like the snakes or like other wild animals. Also, you are open in an open space where other people can come and rob you and also violate you by hurting you. And so living conditions also becomes very difficult to, my, uh, to mobile yourself from town, wherever you are, to back to your space. Because no transport, people on along the road, you become a hiker because you don't have regularly enough money. Also, it's impacting because you have now become unemployed. Mm -hmm. So it is disintegrating families. It is really also affecting the children. Uh, what I know is children get pregnant because parents cannot organize them properly. Children don't have discipline and they start to mend for themselves. And um, it's also very difficult. Do you, do you leave this small property of yours in the road and go start looking for a job? Or do you stay there and divide yourself? When there, is, there are single um, men there and there are also men with families. So people living also in that corridor has nobody to talk to. 
no councillors are visiting them. Mm -hmm. We are having even the new councils now, new councillors now, um, are they still organising their diaries or what happens? They have nobody to talk to. <coughs> the media made a noise um, last year with the land conference 2018 and of course I'm thankful that we can still talk about them today. Nobody, there is no human rights consideration, um, there is no social service provision. Mm -hmm. um, they have to make do with what possibly they have. If one of them receives a grant, that must include uh, transport money, health money, food money, uh, children's school money. So the conditions really in the corridor people uh, are very, very bad. They have lost their animals. Um, they, they don't have anything. They have gone back into the poverty uh, number. Mm -hmm. So they have become a number added to the poverty. Statistics. Mm. Now, Ms. Nami says the much awaited ancestral land report is now out. Mm. What are your views on this? Yeah, um, thanks that it is out. Um, we, we, it came out now this January, exactly on the third year. Uh, since the conference, I think it's one year and few months, uh, one year 2020 and then in a few months. Um, I think for me, I am a bit disappointed. Disappointed in the sense that um, I feel we have been summarized and condensed into small paragraphs. Um, I have seen out of the many uh, public hearings, I have engaged in four, and I have observed the outpouring of people with information and with documentation, oral information. And I have seen the commission recording um, very professionally. But what I've seen out now looks like a very small inboxed little stories and also very disappointing in terms of us people who speak the Ngokwe uh, language, uh, the Kwe Kwe Kupap. I think uh, somehow the write-up uh, stands out like it is again written by from a colonial point of view. Um, of course, there's codes, there's references from all those books and all those writings from the past. And already I feel that writings are very biased as well against certain people. For example, when you say um, the genocide and in the genocide, you keep on speaking only uh, about two tribes and you leave out the other tribes and yet in the fact in the real life, for example, people who have gone into Botswana, who have um, r took refuge because of that conditions, are Herero, Nukwe speaking, San speaking, and Nama speaking. But we keep on blocking ourselves and even in our writings, keep on writing only about the others and leaving the Nukwe and the San people. Mm -hmm. um, that kind of report for me has come out. I also find the report um, not very strong, uh, like the communities have spoken. You know, I, I, the, the commissioners, from what I've seen, were very touched. But when they write, it, you cannot see that this is people who say that they were touched and they were um, grateful that they got so much information. So the oral information that was given is not speaking there. Also, I think the recommendations um, are really very much uh, recommendations that seems to become very careful. Mm -hmm. People were very clear as to what they want. People say it clear how they lost their land. People say it clear how they were robbed from their work, um, from their farm points where they were and literally being removed and then it was owned by other people. Mm -hmm. But those are, are like it's covered up or it has been put under the cupboard. 
And that's really, for me, very disappointing. And again, I don't know how it's going to work, whether we will stay in the implementation being that selective again. Now, Ms. Namaste, speaking about implementation, Namibia, the Namibian government itself has admitted over years that it is uh, lacking when it comes to implementing uh, recommendations and issues like this on time. Mm. Now, as a community, how will you contribute to making sure that these recommendations from this ancestral re report will be implemented mm -hmm. speedily? Actually, um, it's very much true that government gets stagnated when it comes to the implementation. Mm -hmm. Very loud in speaking and very efficient in uh, developing the policies and the, the laws, but very stagnated in the implementation. So how can we uh, really make it happen? Um, nowadays there is this fear of uh, people to stand up and demonstrate. Nowadays, the COVID regulations are governing us. But I think the first point, and I mean really the first point, is to visit, pay a visit, because now that the report is out, our president has not said very clearly how they will go about against stagnation is there, how they will go about. So our first point of entry should be to pay a visit mm -hmm. to the Ministry of Lands mm -hmm. and to discuss now that this is here, what can, what is your plan? Mm -hmm. How do you want to do? And if maybe he directs us differently, then we can take that. Also, the other point is, it's also the municipal land that especially for the commoning um, is around here. So it's now to engage with the city of Venduk because now they have taken the 60 kilometer radius uh, in Venduk Rural. So they, they are responsible to really go and talk to them to hear and get the understanding of what's their plan of action. And then I think what we also need to do is to take the report and scrutinize it amongst us very well so that we are able to articulate what people are actually saying by reading between the lines mm -hmm. so that people can become conscious and aware of how the report is saying things and mm -hmm. what the report is speaking about looking at the content and then also at the recommendation. So maybe two, three um, points of engagement. And because it's very important that communities, as much as they're angry and they want to be uh, given land, needs to understand the predicament that they are now in. So that um, the and communities are disappointed. Um, bigger in the country, especially those who have really lost the land. The, uh, the, uh, um, the inhabitants, original inhabitants of this land um, feel that there is injustice in this report. So you need to, and they were willing to come out and really bring the story. That the, the land conference, this conference and the commission was their hope. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, with that, I mean to talk to them mm -hmm. on the report because now there is no plan from the, the government to bring out the report, simplify it and breaking it down and then present it back to the people. I think that should be the best way. Then we as the civil society organizations, we have um, committees um, on the land and um, also on ancestral land. We need to do that. Then there is the high uh, level committee that has been there. Maybe they need to be presenting and talking around this matter so that that can come out. What is their thinking? But at this moment, I think there w is definitely like usual going to be two roads mm -hmm. uh, for the people and against the people. Ms. Namin says lastly, uh, the question of land. 
Why are we struggling to get it right? Mm. I think, in my honest opinion, the elite, small cliques have joined, of new elites have joined those who have owned the land already. And what I mean here is, in the governing bodies of this country, the leadership have started to benefit themselves on the land. Um, today, we, I remember in that land conference, we wanted to ask the list of people who have uh, received land so that in a real just and transparent manner, you can talk about who has been allocated land. But of course, we know because I travel this land uh, and this country and I know who is where sitting and there are disputes people are reporting even in the com from the communities to us and they tell us that their neighbor who is so and so uh, is now chasing them is fencing extending from the boundaries we know that there were cases where high names were said that they own the land yet they were saying no it was uh, a, a low level uh, uh, citizen that was allocated but the citizen never lives on that land and that when you benefit you don't talk you don't talk against it you don't make an, it an urgent matter you don't see it as a need on behalf of the other people because the leaders and the political leaders are benefiting. They have joined those uh, colonial people who have already owned the land. They have joined those commercial people who have owned the land. The very thing that we are saying, don't own more than one. They are, the, and I know the names, they are sitting with more than one farm again. So the, the pain is repeated and therefore um, they are an interest party and no longer a leader of the people who will fight for the land. So the only people that will speak are people who um, are in need of the land, people who have lost their land. But I tell you, the political leaders are not going to speak about the land. And that's why it is difficult. And that's why even that report looks like it looks um, the way it is being written, because um, it, ni it needs to navigate and, and, and present a way where it is somehow mild and somehow compromising. Mm -hmm. Instead of bringing it to the open and really speak about it, and people can share the land. People, we say it one farmer, one farm. Mm -hmm. We say it so. But I think there is that grit, like the fish rod grit. Mm -hmm. That is it. Thank you very much for joining us once again. Thank you. Mm. Thank you for tuning in. Go far with Paratus. Go further with Paratus Fiber. Paratus, offering high-speed, reliable fiber connectivity. Starting from only $620 Namibian dollars per month. Unlimit your lifestyle and visit na.paratus.africa for more information.